Okay. So this is the mold. Okay, this is the original mold of the second Trump, Cyrus Trump Temple coin. And as you can see over here, let's see what we have. Okay, first of all, we, we have over here in Hebrew, Lemalot Shivim Shana, to fulfill 70 years. The original verse, to fulfill 70 years, is when the Jews went out to exile, to the Babylonian exile. They were there for 70 years. And after 70 years, King Cyrus said, God, the Lord of the world, gave me permission to let you, the Jews, come back to the land of Israel. And look what he said. And he charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem. That happened about 2,500 years ago. And now, 70 years for the state of Israel, something happened again. One of the biggest leaders of the world, again, President Donald Trump, and here we see the seal of America. He again recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, of the state of Israel, the people of Israel. And he also built a house in Jerusalem. But we don't want only the embassy. We hope as just as King Cyrus pushed us, the Jewish people, to rebuild the temple, we hope all the 70 nations and President Donald Trump, after he recognized Jerusalem as the spiritual, holy capital of the land of Israel, of the state of Israel, he will help us, the Jewish people, rebuild the third temple. And that's why we have the Seal of America, the original Persian Empire. Christianity and Islam and all the monotheism uh, religious has a very, very important role to unify everybody to worship the true living God and to prosper and thrive according to God's will. It's so simple. Do you think that the Vatican uh, Pope Francis, he seems to have a similar message? Do you think that the that Rome will go along with this too? Do you think this is... No, I, I don't think so. There, in the US there are 30,000 denominations of Christianities. So, uh, according to what we received, part of them will be part of the redemption, part of them no. Uh, it's very, very simple. So, um, whomever will accept to be uh, uh, exactly as the nations, whomever will come as, as a person to come to be, uh, to worship God, he will be part of the redemption. As simple as that. Just look at look at look at look around you. Look at look who's sitting here. And where are you from? Jamaica. Jamaica. And you're from the USA. And you're from Argentina. Ar Argentina. And where are you Guatemala. from? Guatemala. Guatemala. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. And we have somebody from India. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> here, in the center of Jerusalem, I'm surrounded people from other nations. And we're all talking about one thing of the importance of Jerusalem and the importance of peace and the importance of the Gula of redemption. So we're part of a prophetic process. That's what it's all about. And this president, uh -huh. he understood what nobody else understood. He understood we're not talking politics. We're not talking politics. We're talking Torah, we're talking prophets. That's what it's all about. And once we understand it, and I think he understood it, maybe he can't say it, but he knows and he's pushing us. He's pushing us and we, the whole world is, there. world is there. Can I ask a... You, you, Where are you from? England. England, okay. <laughs> yeah, England also. Can I ask, you said earlier that some of the temple is ready to be built in a prefab state. Is that true? Do you have part of the temple already built? And, and it's exactly what we said before. It's not enough to pray for the temple. And if you pray for something, you have to believe. And to show that you believe something, you have to do. So that's why we have a lot of vessels made. We have a, a big altar that was made. We have programs and yes, also some of the uh, pieces of the temple, like this box itself, can be just transferred exactly like the model we see over here. 
15 times bigger than this, and the temple can be built. As Trump says, every nation will keep his language, his culture, <laughs> his beliefs. It's not the globalization. Okay. It's to walk, to walk one God on Temple Mount. What is a Muslim? That's a talk. What is a Muslim? Muslim in the Hebrew world is perfect. Whomever talk to God is perfect. According to the Quran, Ibrahim was Muslim. Um, uh, Moses was mu Muslim. He was perfect. And uh, they they um, got into a conclusion that the Messiah will be their Mahdi. Mm. Their Mahdi. So. Whenever I meet Muslims in many countries, I, ask, I tell them, who was Muslim according to the Quran? Ibrahim, Abraham, I'm from Ibrahim. Mo Moses, Mo Mo Musa, I'm from Musa, I'm Levi. And the Mashiach, Messiah, will be uh, the Mahdi. So actually our history is the same, our future is the same, so what is the problem now? And they ask really, what is the problem? I'm saying that the problem is only the radicals, they're the terrorists. But whenever everybody will um, support building the third temple, uh, everybody, then everybody will prosper because this is what the temple is for, <laughs> for the whole world. So you think that there could be some union between all the religions as Absolutely. part of Absolutely. We already have uni unity, but everybody's afraid from the terrorists. But um, okay, so this is our job to unify everybody to worship the only true living God uh, in the third temple with all the nations, all the nations that will worship God. Muhammad Hashem will be a king, the one king that will unite the whole right. world. So yes. So you see that Jacob and Esau reuniting in the last days. Uh, so Muslims and Jews and Christians would be part of this one world, including some uh, Kabbalistic and uh, Eastern influences, all into one kind of religion in this temple is that i won't call it one kind of religion and one kind of understanding like a new way of thinking so it's understanding that there is one god in heaven so it's kind of a, a new way a higher consciousness a higher way of exactly. thinking exactly. okay and uh, at the end of times everybody will understand that Hashem okay god is one okay so but this is a similar design to to the third temple and uh, uh, it's a very sort of kingly temple, isn't it? And um, I wanted to ask you this uh, lamp. So you've got the lamp. That that would be the lamp lamp of Queen Helena, who is a Persian. I, you know, I mistakenly thought it was Constant Constantine's mother, Helena, but this is a Persian Queen Helena. She was very fond of the Jewish people, as she converted to Judaism mm -hmm. herself, and the sages liked her very much. And when she wanted to donate something to the temple, so she made this candelabra okay. made, made of gold. Okay. And when the sun used to rise from the east, right. it would hit the, the gold candelabra and the, it would spread the light like symbolically, but not only symbolically, from the temple. So it reflects the sun. It reflects the sun. Exactly. As it rises from the east. And this is what we're seeing in this picture over here, right? This. Uh, this is the sun reflection from the lamp of Queen Helena. That's right. And so we've got that kind of Persian thing again. And, and would, is, would it be right to say that there's some element of Kabbalah in, in this temple? Well, the Kabbalah is actually the inner part of the Torah. We have what the Torah tells us and it's written in the Torah. And the Kabbalah is actually what isn't written, but we have to want to understand maybe about a little Persia and these all ancient nations, Eastern, Eastern nations, religions. so it's maybe religions. So would you describe this as like a, a kind of a new world order, so to speak? This is not an order, this is uh, not order, it's, uh, it's different. It's uh, the new world um, without any, let's say, negative and forbidden feelings, like hatred, like uh, revenge, like, it will be only loving, appreciation, uh, honoring. So this will be a, a new world, but not all order. It will be a new world, uh, holistic, uh, the holistic way, the, the way God wants it. On here, it says the Persian Empire. 
do you think that this temple could somehow unite Islam, Muslim uh, religion with Christianity and Judaism? Do you think that's... So, so if we're talking about the Persian Empire, we know now that in Iran, which is where Persia is now, there's some different empire, but we talk, we're talking about the original Persian Empire. And yes, even in Iran, we have Iranians who are not Jewish, who want this coin because they understand that, yes, this is the place that will unite the whole world. And yes, the Jewish people have the power to unite the whole world. It's not us, not just Jewish the people, but as long as we are talking the words of Hashem, that's what Hashem is. Hashem Echad, Hashem Echad. Hashem is the one which can unite everybody. Messiah will be the judge. You believe the Mashiach Ben David is, is coming he's, he's, to, to this temple? Mashiach Ben David is very soon and he is a Jew. And it is, he is not Jesus. And uh, if the Christians want to hold it, they can hold it. And uh, Mashiach Ben David would potentially be the Messiah that would rule over this unity. Uh, this one world unity. The first king we had that was a real king was King David and we know that the king that will be eventually uh, leading the world will also be from Yehuda, like you said Mashiach ben David. Or eventually the leader of the world will be a king, but not a political king, but a spiritual king that will help all of us uh, understand together what we are supposed to be, do, be doing in this world. Yeah, I mean, Jesus is described as the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the Son of David. Do you think that maybe Jesus, Yeshua, could be the, the true Messiah and we might have maybe a counterfeit that could show up? People will understand. It's like, I don't know, a small kid when you offer him chocolate or an adult. If you offer him money, nobody's going to say no to money, which is something very not spiritual. When we have the right understanding of what's important in the world, it will be obvious to all of us that that's what we want. Everybody will be running after spirituality. So when that time comes, everybody will want it. Okay, so we believe that the false, that the Antichrist will um actually be the head of this deception before the real Mashiach comes. That's where we, we differ on our thinking at the moment. It says on the, in the Temple Institute that there's going to be a Sanhedrin court. Yes. So, so they would make sort of judgments from the court in the temple. Is that... a, there is a special place in the temple for the Sanhedrin, my temple will be the center of the prey of the whole world. This is what Isaiah says. So we know this is, will be the future, so we are just marching it. I know it's, uh, it's like a, for, a mathematical formula. We're uh, getting closer and closer. The last Sanhedrin war uh, was uh, 1600 years ago. Uh, and um, we had the right code how to reestablish it because we knew that it has to be established. And um, all the rabbis agreed on one rabbi that he is like Moses. He can uh, ordain other people. He ordained three, and uh, the the three of them ordained seventy-one in Tiberius, exactly this exactly the same place where the last Sanhedrin sat six hundred years ago. Six. So this is part of the process. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. 
and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men, in thy hills, and in thy valleys, and in all thy rivers, shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger, and according to thine envy which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them, when I have judged thee. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me, I have heard them. Thus saith the Lord God, When the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee, thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all I do Mia, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath for ever, but I will send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first, and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Shalom.